Men, look on your notes, it says that men have five basic needs. Uh, men, I encourage you to write these down because it helps you understand yourself, but certainly women, you need to write this down. Five basic needs. Men have more needs than this, but these are the five general needs that men have. All right? Some women are thinking, yeah, I know, it's sex, 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 sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting there. But come on. We're not, we're not that one-dimensional. Close, but not quite. All right, so the first one, women, make sure you write this down, is men need to be admired. Men need to be admired. This is so important. Can you explain it in other sentence? To be admired means that women need to affirm their husbands, to say, wow, I love him. You're, you're wonderful. They need to be praised, encouraged, Look admired. Up Looked up to. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, and so that's why it's important, wives, to constantly affirm your husbands. Affirm them. Build them up. Guys like, to, guys like to portray themselves as being tough. You know, Bruce Willis. I know, you, I know I've been told I look like Bruce Willis. Yeah. But um, yeah. <laughs> men like to portray themselves. <laughs> men like to portray themselves like they're lone rangers, that they don't need anybody and they're really cool. I get a kick out of this. You know, as I walk down streets and I see guys that are, you know, working on the streets or doing construction, you know, those guys all look really tough and cool. You know, like, yeah. We, we put on this front, but guys are just little kids. They're just little boys that have wounds and hurts, yeah. you know, and they need to be affirmed. They need to be admired and encouraged. We, we all need this, but this is very important for men. So wives, you need to affirm your husbands and affirm them and show that you admire them and do this daily throughout the day. This builds up your husband. He'll, I mean, you'll just have it. He'll be a totally different man if you start putting these principles uh, into, into work in your lives. Uh, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1 says, A wise woman builds her home, but a foolish woman tears it down. 16. Pardon me? What was the reference? 16. Uh, Proverbs 14, verse 1. Yeah, thank you. I think it's in your notes there. Do you have one of the handouts? Yeah. All right, great. Um, yeah, so I mean, really, the, the power of a godly woman... In the marriage relationship in a home is, is incalculable. I mean, you have women have so much power in the home. It's absolutely amazing. You have the power to build your family up, to build your husband up, to be the man of God that he needs to be, to build your children up. But you also have that same power verbally to tear down your husband, to tear down your children. You've got that choice. Number two. Men have five basic needs. The second one is men need to be respected in front of the children. Men need to be respected in public and in private. Respect your husband. Don't tear him down. And in front of the children, don't, don't be so disagreeable and, and uh, disagree with him constantly in front of the children and, and, and cut him down and make fun of him. I, you know, when, when, when women do that, they're tearing, they're, they're destroying their family with their own words. Men need to be respected. That's a huge, huge thing with men. Show respect. You'll, you'll get a, you'll, your marriage will go far when you admire and respect your, your husband. Number three, men appreciate when their wives take care of their outer appearance. All right, some women will look great up until the honeymoon, <laughs> and then after that, they start looking, they start kind of going downhill after that, or maybe after they have a few kids. And it just, men appreciate it when, when their wives take care of themselves, when they still look good and put on a little makeup and, you know, put on something cute once in a while and take care of their own bodies, their outer appearance. It's important to, to men. Number four. Men want their wives' companionship. A lot of wives don't realize this. But men, companionship, they like to be, they want you to be their friends, to do things with them. Uh, we, we, uh, we were talking to a wife several years ago, and, and I, you know, I knew her and her husband, they were both Christians, but her and her husband weren't, they didn't have a very good marriage relationship. And, uh, and I, she said, um, 
She said, my husband always wants me to go to the bowling alley with him. You know, you understand bowling? Okay. Yeah. The bowling alley. Well, I don't like to go because there's a bar there. They serve alcohol there, and I don't like to go to the bowling alley. And I said, let me ask you a question. Did you go to the bowling alley with him when you were dating? Well, yes, but, you know, that was before we were married. And then I got him, and now I don't go to the bowling alley with him. You know, it's like he got... he. he your goods were misrepresented to him then because you gave him the impression that you enjoyed doing things with him. And now after you're married, after 30, 40 years, you don't do those things with him. And, and that, that hurts him. And there, that's caused a division in your relationship. Go bowling with him. Oh, but they serve alcohol there. Well, don't drink the alcohol. <laughs> but be his friend. Be his companion his partner, his helpmate. Um, you know, in the U.S., it's popular to go hunting. I love, you know, I've gone hunting before, and I love to hunt. And uh, praise God, I've got a wife that loves guns. Hallelujah. I am a blessed man. She's got some guns. We go target practice. She shoots better than I do half the time. Um, but, you know, we've met women who will go hunting with their, their, their husbands before they get married, and the guy is like, whoa, man, I've got a girl that goes hunting with me. This, she is so awesome. And then she catches him, they get married, and then she doesn't go hunting with him anymore. You know? And he's like, what kind of a woman did I marry? I thought she enjoyed doing things with me. Guys enjoy companionship. Be his companion. If you're not gonna be his companion, he'll find companionship somewhere. All right, so men want their wives companionship. Do things with him that he likes to do, you know, if it's not illegal. You know, you know, you understand what I'm saying. If he wants to go to a strip bar and watch naked women, you know, that's wrong. Don't go with it. But the vast majority of things are totally allowable here. All right, number five. What do you think number five is? <laughs> yes, husbands need sexual fulfillment. Absolutely. Husbands need sexual fulfillment. Men, this is just how God created us. Men were created with a strong sex drive. Women were created with a sex drive as well. But he created men with a stronger sex drive. And to refuse your husband in this area will push him into the arms of another woman or into pornography. You can't do that. It, it grieves us. I mean... Kathy talks to so many women that are her age, you know, in, in their 40s and 50s, who have pretty much stopped having, and they're Christian women, who have just kind of stopped having sex with their husbands. And the husbands are miserable, and the wives are like, oh, yeah, we just don't do it anymore, you know, for whatever reason, their hormones or what, you know. That's not right. That is not right. So don't withhold sex from your husband. Your husband has this God-given sex drive, and... And it helps bring a blessing to your marriage. Okay, men. Women also have five basic needs. And you're thinking, only five? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about these five basic needs. All right? We could be here for three days. But yeah. <laughs> women have five basic needs. Uh, the checkbook, first of all. No, I'm kidding. All right, the first basic need is she needs to know that her man is committed to her and the family. The sense of security is so important to a woman. A woman needs to feel secure with her husband. She needs to feel safe with him. Again, she needs to know that her man is committed to her and the family. That they're number one. You want a great marriage? Guys, this is what you need to do. Your wife is first in your life. There's Jesus, then your wife, then your children if you get children. And I hope you do, because they're a blessing. And then whatever comes after that, ministry and etc. after that. But it's got to be your personal relationship with Jesus first. Then your personal relationship with your spouse comes ahead of your kids. You, they, she has to come ahead of the kids. And then your relationship with your kids. And then ministry and etc. That brings security to her. 
women need to feel that sense of security, financially and emotionally. So men, if your family is not healthy, your ministry will not be healthy. If things aren't right at home, then things will not be right in ministry. Okay, You might be able to fake it for a few years, but it'll eventually come through and people will see that there's a phony, there's a phony here. There's something not right here. Number two, she wants you to be the spiritual leader and example to the family. So many Christian guys drop the ball on being the leader, the spiritual leader in their family, and they just, they just give that position to their wives to do it. I'll tell you, every wife I talk to says, oh, I wish my husband would, would institute praying with me. That he'd just take my hand and say, let's pray. I wish my husband would say, let's read the Bible as a family together. Yeah, women can do it. And in, in the vast majority of Christian families, women have... have have taken this responsibility because the men have just given it to them. And that's really lazy and irresponsible on men's part. Men, you've got to lead your family, spiritually speaking. So she wants you to be the spiritual leader, to be the example for the family. Number three, she needs you to be open and honest. She needs you to be open and honest. A lot of men have trouble with being open and honest. Right? A lot of guys will just sit and think and mull things over in their minds, and the wives have no idea where their husbands are coming from. They say, please, let's talk. Can we talk? How are you doing? You've got to talk to your wife. Let her know how you're doing. She needs to go. When you, when you talk to her and let her know how you're doing, that brings a sense of emotional security to her. You've got to communicate with her. And you've also got to listen to her. That brings that sense of security as well. You need to be open and honest, and you need to listen to her. Number four, she needs your praise. Men need respect. Women need praise. You look great today. Praise. And praise, yeah. You tell her when she's 20, when she's 30. You tell her when she's 80. All right. And believe, you know, I'm just telling you, when, after you're married 40, 50, 60 years, you are not going to look like your wedding picture. All right. Just, just know that, that your wife is not going to look the same she did, except my wife does, but I mean, other than my wife. Your wife will not look the same she did 40 years earlier. It, it just, you know, there's gravity that takes place, you know, that just things start kind of <laughs> dropping. That, that's how it happens, all right? That's life. But she needs to know that you are committed to her and you still love her, that she's still the most beautiful woman in the world. Wow. You need to praise her, even when she has bad breath or I love your T-shirt. What's the, where's the T-shirt? What's, uh, what's your shirt say again? I woke up like this. I, love that. I, I would like to have a t-shirt like that. A girl has a t-shirt. I woke up like this. This is fantastic. Yeah, she needs your praise. I, I like there's a there's a country song. I don't like country music, but there's this song that goes like this. Um, she don't know she's beautiful. No, she's not that kind. You know, she don't know she's beautiful. Never crossed her mind. I should just keep singing it right now. She don't know she's beautiful, though time and time I tell her so. You know, it's just a great song. You know, but, when, but women need to be praised. And I'll tell you, if you don't praise her, there's going to be other men that will praise her. She needs to hear it from you and from you often, daily, throughout the day. Hey, I love you. You look great. You look fantastic. I love that dress. Looks fantastic on you. Don't do the, hmm, eh, I don't care, whatever, yeah, so what, you know. <laughs> That's totally lame, totally lame to talk to your wife that way. Amen. Yeah. Huh? What was that? Come on. <laughs> amen. Amen. An Estonian amen. Praise God. That's good. <laughs> we don't have Texas here. we got to get it from somewhere. All right. Number five. She, this is important. Number five. She wants to be dated regularly and often. She wants to be dated 
regular, that should have been the biggest amen right there. Amen. And a man, say, a man says amen. All right, come on, ladies. Yeah. She wants to be dated regularly and often. Don't just date her to, like a fisherman catches a fish and pulls her in and now I've got her. <laughs> Listen, if you want her heart by dating her before you got married, you're going to continue winning her heart by dating her after you get married. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you say date her, do you mean, you're not meaning taking her out, but you're talking about pursuing her. Yeah, keep pursuing her, spending time with her, taking her out, going out for coffee. We do this a lot. We, we date each other quite a bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's that? Just romancing each other. Yeah, romancing each other. Do the things you did at the beginning. That's why I tell people. When people say, oh, you know, our marriage is struggling after five years or 15 years, I just say, well, do the things you did before you got married. You know. Well, what were those? Well, we were, we went out for ice cream together. We talked on the phone a lot. Or we, you know, we were always, usually there was a lot of communication. Mm -hmm. Personal, one-on-one, -on -one, uninterrupted communication. That's what goes on in a date, right? Yeah. A date is not, hey, let's go to a movie and watch, you know, Die Hard 5, <laughs> you know, um, that's not a date, that's, you're going to watch a great guy flick is what you're doing, you know, or watching Pride and Prejudice or something. Um, <laughs> there's no communication in watching a movie, and we love watching old movies, I've told you that, but that's not a date, that's not communication. Communication is turning off everything else, face to face, face, -to -face intimate contact, being open and honest, sharing your heart, listening to each other. I, I'm hearing what you're saying. I understand what, how you're feeling right here. And then just sharing with each other. Yes? Do you still get, like, butterflies? Do I still get butterflies? <laughs> um, I, we, yeah, I mean, I still... I would say it's a little different. Yeah, I, I mean, before you're married, I remember, you know, when you're holding your hand with your 